I get asked frequently why I chose to become a maths teacher. One day I asked my year 10 class why so many people were curious about this decision and they explained it like this. Sir, so many people dislike maths. That's why I wonder why anyone would choose a profession where you not only have to do maths every day, but also have to try and teach maths to students who dislike it. So let me try to explain the reasons why I became a maths teacher and why maybe even you should consider doing the same. Everyone wants to find a career that's rewarding and worthwhile. We want to be able to get up in the morning and feel motivated to go to work, not just for days, weeks and months, but for years and decades. Now I wonder what criteria you have in your mind for how you'll choose your career. Money? Status? And the author Daniel Pink talks about how science and research have identified three main factors that seem critical to long-term motivation. And those three factors are autonomy, mastery and purpose. Autonomy is the desire to direct our own lives. Mastery is the urge to get better and better at something that matters. And purpose is the yearning to do what we do in the service of something larger than ourselves. Autonomy, mastery and purpose. What I love about teaching maths is that it's got all three in spades. Autonomy. There's so much flexibility in how you explain concepts and skills, what activities you do with your classes, and how you help people learn. You can throw tennis balls in the air to demonstrate projectile motion, pour water into giant martini glasses to explain rates of change, measure the heights of trees to demonstrate trigonometry, or fold and cut paper to illustrate symmetry. You can make your explanation into a story and take your students on a journey of understanding. You can open their eyes to the beauty of what they're learning in any way you like. And that's not even mentioning the kind of autonomy you get from teaching in general. Whatever your particular kinds of interests and skills, you can find or make an avenue for it at school through extracurricular groups. Uh, I have a web and graphic design background, so one of the earliest projects I took on was to redesign my school's intranet from the ground up. Now, I also love sports, so I ran touch football sessions in the morning and at lunch times. There's so much scope to pursue things that interest you. Then there's mastery. There are a few things as enjoyable as picking up a new skill. There's that fist pumping moment of satisfaction when you get to the point in learning and you can say to yourself, I can do this. And this is really hard and I thought it would be impossible for me to do, but I'm really good at it now and this is awesome. And that's what mastery is about. And teaching maths provides endless scope for developing and achieving it. Now, I remember one of the first times I taught a class and was explaining the existence of imaginary and complex numbers when suddenly the eyes of every student in the room just lit up because they had just encountered a totally foreign idea, but now they understood what it was all about. It really clicked for them. And then I knew I'd mastered it, the ability to take an idea, absorb it, and then convey it clearly and succinctly from my mind to theirs. And it was exhilarating. And that happens to me every day. I keep working on different aspects of my teaching and I keep improving. Mastery, it's so rewarding. Now, teaching maths provides lots of scope for autonomy and mastery, but it's real ace in the whole is purpose. You know, the desire we have to make a contribution and be involved in something bigger than ourselves. You see, it comes back to that year 10 class who told me how so many people dislike maths. Why do they dislike maths? Now, I think one of the main reasons is because they haven't been taught maths well. They haven't been taught maths clearly and simply. They haven't been taught how beautiful and surprising and fun it can be. They haven't been taught to appreciate the power and elegance of mathematics, which ma the mathematician and physicist Galileo called the language in which the entire universe is written. And that's why we need people who are passionate about learning and effective about communicating to take up the mantle of maths education. It's such a worthwhile cause. It's a, such a worthwhile purpose. To illustrate, it's an almost universal human experience to enjoy and value music. But imagine if you traveled to another planet where its inhabitants hated music. They hated it because all they knew of it was repetitive training exercises and hundreds of hours of memorizing theory about scales and time signatures and musical notation. Would you not feel compelled to break out an instrument and play a song for them to help them see that music's an incredible avenue for expression and creativity that's written into our very bones? Yet you live on that planet already. On this planet, the melodies and harmonies of mathematics are seldom heard. And the purpose of a math teacher is to help people see and appreciate mathematics for the symphony it is, and even help people add their own voices to the mix. I still remember teaching a girl in year 11 and 12 who joined the school intent on dropping mathematics, but I knew she could do it and be fantastic at it. So I begged her to stay 
And not only did she stay, she became one of my very best students. When she graduated high school, I got to celebrate her achievement because we achieved it together. Now that's a purpose worth coming to work for. So teaching mathematics, autonomy, mastery, and purpose, it's got tons of it. It's really worth your consideration.